where we're at with it, first of all, as much as the drivers are going to complain about motor, which Chris, is very Mike, true. Tony, all, all know drivers complain about motor when they've got the best motor usually most of the time. Unless you have a motor that's half the half second up on the field, driver's going to complain about the engine. So we got to put that preface out there. I also want to make sure that it's known. USP kit, all, all three of the RPG guys cleared post-race tech inspection. <laughs> And with the program they've got set up, those guys are, are doing, you know, making good gains. I think this it's gotten tighter as the year's gone on, but um, Fuck it, I'm doing I want to make sure we get <laughs> <laughs> want to make sure I we saw get these guys respect. and then I figured I would I wouldn't join him. No, we, we wanna we wanna make sure we give those guys uh, a, a lot of credit. Um and we'll give Ryan Ryan takes his licks really well and they know, you know, when you start winning, people uh, people get mad because uh, they can't they everybody wants to win. But we want to talk about, though, and this is something that's uh, been kind of a hot topic. Brandon and I even talked about it all the way back on our podcast in January of this year. And this is kind of a two-pronged question. We'll get to um, the second half of the question about licensing and stuff like that, which is what it more pertains to at the end of the year. But, um, you know, when it comes down to the X30 class, for the last five to seven years, we were – we're obviously we're 10 horsepower down from our X30 counter for from our European counterparts. The OK senior class is almost 40 horsepower. It runs at a much lighter weight. I don't think we can make that work and still get good numbers in the States. We can maybe drop 10 pounds. That'd be about it. Uh, if you go to the light weight they're at, it's basically a junior <laughs> class weight that they run. All right. We'll get let me explain, Tony. We'll get going. I just want to prep it for the crowd here. Not everyone knows everything in the sport like you do. You know more than I do, all right? But not all of our viewers know everything. So give me a second here. <laughs> Causing heck already, man. This is why we got the DMs. Let's go back. I didn't think you could hear me. I didn't no, think you could hear me. My bad. We can hear everything you say, Tony. We can hear everything. <laughs> He's getting ready to argue when you're just oh like putting God. it out there. You guys should have said it before, before this whole show started. <laughs> Well, you couldn't get on. You're too busy driving okay. home. Continue. You guys should have hit the gas. <laughs> I don't know why you didn't pay off the cops in Cincy so you could get home 20, 10 minutes earlier. I would have prepped you. <laughs> so, um, anyway, we're 10 horsepower down. Could, we're not. We're running about 30 to 40 pounds heavier than the European guys. I think it's like 35 when it comes out. I, I'm on, I know I'm wrong on that. But we're 30 to 40 pounds heavier. We're 10, 10 horsepower lighter. Um, but when the X30 came out, the X30 motor came out, we were running Yamaha as the support class, which was substantially slower than KA100. Um, and so, and the X30 came out first, and the Yamaha was kind of so so at the club level and already slowly declining. So, when the tag motors were still big at the club level, we, you know, the, the market really called for a motor that could be run at the club races and the national races. And the song that I was singing for the last couple of years is that it would have been great if, it, if the market would have worked out that the K could have come out first. And gotten to the point where we are now, where almost every club is KA in 206. Uh, if they have any kind of two-stroke racing, it's predominantly KA. There may be some shifter stuff there. A couple clubs have X30 and 125 racing. For the most part, it's now 100cc, 22 horsepower motors. Um, so that way you could go faster on the national level. Because we didn't want to go too fast where a club guy couldn't even handle it. Um, or burn up the tires so much. Because you go faster, you're going to burn through rubber more. But it had to kind of be this awkward medium, it seemed like, at least from where I was at, that we were at a good point with the X30. It was not too crazy for a club guy, but ultimately when we got to pro racing, it was too slow. The fields were super, super tight. And in simple math, right, one horsepower more of, you know, 31 to 30 is a bigger ratio of a horsepower percentage than 41 to 40. So if you go add more horsepower, then the speed matters. Uh, the differences in horsepower matters less if everybody is just running more. You know, you're losing substantially less. More in the driver's hands, faster we go. Now we're finally at the point where almost every single club um, is on to KA. Almost every single regional series is predominantly KA. There's a handful of places that run X30, run 125 racing, where Doty's up at in, in New York at OVRP is predominantly 125. Florida still has a lot of 125 racing. SoCal has a lot of 125 racing, but Texas is fully on to KA. GoPro's club is almost completely K has X30 for the national guys. Um, but that's really the main reason that gets run outside of a couple stragglers and a lot of other places, the Midwest big place where K is taken off Badger. They even call it, you know, tag 100 or I am, you know, pro tag racing at Badger in the Midwest areas. And it's all K racing. So now we're at that point where I feel like if it worked out, let's take the, uh, the politics of the economy aside of the market, we bring in a faster motor. Is that what everybody wants? What would the racing look like? 
and what should that look like? So bringing it back to everybody here, we've got our drivers, we've got plenty of guys on, and I want to pass the floor on to Chris and to Doty first because they haven't had the chance to talk just yet to explain. And Chris, you're the one that's most recently been overseas with the OK Racing just a few weeks ago. So you've seen that 40 horsepower. You've seen what the atmosphere is like with the open manufacturer format. Are we in the U.S. at these U.S. PKS events with the field size of the competition where, number one, should we at least be running faster with the pro class? And number two, should we look at even open racing? Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's cyclical, right? Like, Jody and and Tony, we've been been in the industry long enough that we we've, we've seen it kind of go in these waves where, you know, Europe is kind of, you know, arguably the leader in our industry and in our sport. But as Americans, we we definitely like to do things our own way, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, I think in a lot of ways we do things better. We we make we do. A, we make a lot of really good decisions, but I think in some ways we fall behind in in the industry as a whole. Um, you know, should we be going faster? If you look at it from a motorsports uh, perspective of like the grand scheme of motorsports and that the, that ladder of going, especially a lot of the guys that are that are on this show today, that are current drivers. Yes, we should be going faster at a pro level. Um, it should be more difficult. Um, but that, that's completely different than the, the club and regional level. So you kind of have to separate those two, two things. Um, you know, do I think the American market is ready for OK Senior? No, it's not. Uh, I don't think we're, I don't think the, the karting industry in America is what it used to be where we could support ICA or Formula A. Um, I, you know, I think... The OK Junior category, because of the cost comparison to X30, makes a lot of sense. Um, OK Junior is actually cheaper to run. It's cheaper to buy and cheaper to run than an OK, than a X30 Junior engine. Um, yes, it's faster. It's faster than X30 Senior on the same tire. You know, but I mean, the biggest thing is, yes, we are going too slow. I think at a local regional level, no. But on a pro tour, pro level, we are going too slow. And that's maybe one of the reasons why we kind of <clears throat> fall behind on a, a worldwide level. Um, it is also the culture of our motorsports. You know, GoPro is a little different. And a lot of the guys that spend a lot of time at GoPro, I mean, those the people there are, are very motorsports centric. Um, but the rest of the karting industry in America, you know, it, it's more of a hobby. You know, if you go to England, if you go to France, if you go to Germany, some of the kind of motorsports hubs of of the world, you know, karting is a profession for a lot of people. And though it is a profession for a lot of us, like Tony and Mike, a lot of people in the industry still don't look at it as, as a profession for us, even, you know, from outsiders, dads, co you know, clients, they don't necessarily still think it as a profession necessarily. They, it's like a hobby. Um, and, and the motorsports in general, you know, worldwide is more professional. So, you know, to kind of close this out a little bit. Yeah. I mean, on the, on the pro tour level, we could be going faster, but on a club regional level, no, I don't think it's there. Got you. And Dodie, to add on to that, I mean, you know, you're seeing it from a team owner perspective too, you know, <laughs> from both. Not just the going faster part, but the part that would be a lot different yeah. in terms of the environment would be if we had open manufacturer racing or a, the easier option is right is to go to Super X30. Does it look like that? Do you think we should look like that? What uh, Chris already saying no to the Super yeah. X30. <laughs> oh, let me stop you right there. Yeah. Miami makes a great product. The Super uh, X30, the X, the 120, 175 shifter. This is where all this, like people that don't go to Europe, you know, think they know. They're they're clueless. Those engines oh. are trash. Okay, <laughs> no one runs them. You know, someone will get on his high horse and have videos and talk about all this and like they know, like they go to Europe all the time. Look, the only other solution is we open X30 up and let engine builders have the ability to do what they do. That's it. You know, if you want, if you want to solve some of the problems that we like to talk about behind the behind the scenes, you open it up to the way it used to be, and just let engine builders do their job and 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 have, you know, allow them to work and allow them to show showcase their talent. 
You know, right now they're just assemblers, you know, it's who has the biggest budget and who can go through the most cylinders, the most, you know, pipes, the most, the most carburetors and put everything together and find the right home. That's all it is, you know, but if we want to include the industry more, yes, it would be great to have an open tag category, but that's not going to happen. But let these engine builders at least work and showcase their talent, because I think you would see a little bit different, uh, you'd see a few different engine builders at the top that you'd be surprised by if you would open it up. What do you think about that, Doty? And then Tony, you, you after. No, I, I agree with some of that stuff. The, the, okay, the okay stuff is, uh, is cool, but I've been doing this long enough when they start doing that European style racing over here, what happens is they start bringing suitcase motors over. So the series is cool and it's badass. It'll take off for two years and then it will drop off. You'll have, the same thing. You'll have certain drivers, only like one person from each team, whoever can get a suitcase motor from Europe, they're going to be crazy fast. Right. And they're going to, you know, and that's just the way it works. And that's the way it works over there. So when someone over here says, hey, I want to go over there and race, I'm like, you're not going to get anything good. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you do that? If you don't live over there or you don't live there for two years, there's no sense to go. I mean, if you want to go over there for the experience, then go over there. But, I mean, the motors are badass, and the technology is awesome. I just don't think it would work over here. It would work for maybe a year or two, and then it would just get out of control like it normally does, and then it fades away. That so it did in Formula A and ICA. That's that's how all that stuff works. Yeah, but sh motors should be a little bit faster, um, or maybe they should restrict it. Because, honestly, when I'm up at the fence watching the senior tag class, half of those goddamn guys shouldn't even be out there. <laughs> <laughs> but, honestly, they, they're not hitting it. That's the one hundred percent the truth. And they're running into the back of people, and then they're coming. And you see that guy? No, no, I saw you. You can't drive. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, you know, half of the guys running tag should be running ka. And then when you say, "Hey, you're," I think you're in the wrong class. They get him. You, they think that you're insulting them. I'm not insulting them. But the problem is, is no one ever offered it to them. To say, hey, you should probably start off in this division first. They just get, immediately go right in the tag because either they go online and get it, or someone is not giving them the right advice. Yeah, and says, hey, you should probably. This is the class you should be in. Um, because if, but I'm not one of those guys, that. Mike. Right? <laughs> oh man, don't even get me started with you. Connor, <laughs> it's it's really sweet. That people Shut up, Connor. Don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Tony, I'm it's sorry. Just, it's